Welcome to Electra Online. Here's our next example of how to use the nodal analysis method to solve this particular circuit. Again, we have current sources. And that's why we know the nodal analysis method is the best method for this kind of circuit. Let's follow our steps. First, we want to find a reference node with known voltage. We can go ahead and connect this to ground, forcing this to be at zero volts. And that will then be our reference node. We now have two additional nodes. We have one node over here and one node over here. We're going to assign a value to each of those two nodes. We're going to call this V1 and call this V2, the voltage at this node and the voltage at that node. Those are the two unknowns that we're trying to find. We now want to assign currents to the branches. We have two current sources, one in this direction, one in this direction, in those two branches, but we need to find the currents in these three branches. Let's call this current I1, assume it's in this direction, current I2 and current I3. And again, if we chose the wrong direction, we simply will get a negative answer indicating to us that it's actually in the opposite direction. Doesn't really matter if we get it accurate, but I assume that that is probably correct. The next thing we want to do is obtain some equations by using the Kirchhoff's current laws. We look at each of the two nodes looking at all the currents that enter the node, all the currents that leave the node, and we we'll set those equal to each other. So for node number one, and this is step four, I like to label my step, step four, what is entering this node is I1, and I didn't label I1, let's call this I1. So I1 enters that node, and that should equal the sum of I2 and the six amps. So I2 plus six amps, that's our first equation from this node. The second equation from that node, Notice we have I2 and 6 amps entering the node and 2 amps from this direction and we have I3 leaving the node. So for the second equation at the second node we get I2 that enters the node plus 6 amps plus the 2 amps from this branch and that's equal to the current leaving the node which is I3. So now we have the two equations that we need but notice we have three unknowns I1, I2 and I3 so two equations is not enough, not sufficient to find the uh, currents. But what we're going to do is we're going to convert that into two equations with voltages rather than currents. And to do that, we're going to now do step five. We're going to define each of the currents using Ohm's law to convert from current to voltages. For the first current, that's step five up here, we can say that I1 is equal to the voltage drop across this branch, that's the difference from V1 to zero. Now, since we go from zero to V1, I would assume that V1 is at a lower potential and zero volt is a high potential. So we, we subtract the voltage where we're going to from the voltage we're coming from. This is zero minus V1 divided by the resistance, which is five ohms. That should be the current in this particular direction. Second, I2 is equal to, it'll be the voltage from V1 to V2, that would be V1, the higher potential, minus V2 and the lower potential, V1 minus V2 divided by the resistance, which is 2 ohms, and finally I3 can be found by taking the voltage difference. We take where we come from, V2, subtract where we're going to, 0, divided by the 4 ohms. So now we have the three currents defined in terms of voltage. The next step, step five, we're going to take the three definitions of the current and plug that back into our two equations. The first of the two equations now becomes minus V1 divided by five equals I2 is V1 minus V2 divided by two, and we add six to that, plus six. So there's our new equation now in terms of voltage instead of current. The next equation, I2, can be defined as V1 minus V2 divided by 2 plus 6 plus 2, that would be plus 8, equals I3. I3 is equal to V2 divided by 4. So now we have the two equations right here in terms of only V1 and V2. So we have two equations, two unknowns. We can go ahead and solve that. Before we do, let's multiply both equations in such a way that we get rid of the denominators which means the first equation needs to be multiplied times 10, and the second equation should be multiplied times 4. That will enable us to get rid of the denominators. 
The first equation then becomes as follows. That's step number oh, four, five. This is step number six. I mis mislabeled my steps. This is now step number seven. Step number seven says that we're going to set up a linear set of equations. We do that by first simplifying these and rearranging the variables. Five goes into 10 twice. We get minus two V1 equals two goes into 10 five times, five V1 minus five V2. 10 times six is plus 60. For the second equation, we multiply times 4, so 2 goes into 4 twice, that is 2v1 minus 2v2. 8 times 4 is 32, plus 32, and that equals 4 goes into 4 one time, 1 times v2. What we want to do here is write these equations into a set of linear equations with all the v's on one side, all the numbers on the other side, so let's go ahead and simplify that. We have a minus 2v1, when we bring the 5v1 across, that becomes a minus 7v1. Bringing the minus 5v2 across, that becomes plus 5v2 equals 60. In the second equation, we have a 2v1 minus 2v2, bring the v2 across, that becomes minus 3v2. And bring the 32 across, that's equals to a minus 32. We now have the two equations and two unknowns. Notice from three unknown currents, we've reduced that to two unknown voltages. And we can easily solve that equation a number of ways. Let's go ahead and use Kramer's rules and determinants here to solve that. We can write this in the following format. We can write this as a matrix, minus 7, 2, 5, and minus 3. Multiply times the V1, V2 matrix, and that equals the constants 60 and minus 32. Notice that once in that format, we then realize we can find V1 and V2 in the following method. We can find the determinant of this. D is equal to the determinant of that matrix, minus 7, 2, 5, and minus 3. This is equal to the product of those two, which is 21, minus the product of those two, which is 10. That gives us 11. That's the determinant. Now to find the matrix to find V1, I'll label it as 1. That is equal to the same matrix but with the first column replaced with 16 minus 32. So when you do that, you get 60 minus 32, 5 and minus 3. 60 times minus 3 is minus 180, minus times a negative 160, that's a plus 160, which gives you a minus 20. And then the second matrix will give us the value for V2. V2 can be found by replacing these two coefficients by 60 and 32. You grab the 7 and the 2 on the left side, and here you write 60 and minus 32 on the right side. This is equal to the product of this. 7 times 30 is 210, plus 14 is 224. Subtract from that when you multiply those two, that's 120. 224 minus 120 gives you 104. That allows us to find the two voltages. V1 can be found by taking this matrix and dividing it by the determinant. And this matrix gives you a value of minus 20 divided by D, which is a positive 11. That gives you a voltage at V1 equal to, that gives me a voltage of minus 1.818. We'll just keep three. Uh, Three decimal places. Oop, I didn't include the minus here. Let me do that again. There we go. There's the voltage at V1. As suspected, V1 is lower than zero to have current flowing in this direction. V2 can be found by taking the value of this matrix divided by the determinant, and that would be equal to 104 divided by 11, which gives us 104 divided by 11 equals 9.455 volts, 9.455 volts. That is the voltage at this location right here. Now, let's go ahead and find the three currents. Now we have the voltages I1 is equal to the negative of V1 divided by five. 
The negative V1 would be a positive 1.818 divided by 5. That is equal to 1.818 divided by 5 equals 0.364 amps. That would be the value for I1. I2 can be found by taking the difference V1 minus V2 divided by 2. V1 is a minus 1.818. 818 volts. We subtract from that the 9.455 volts divided by 2. 1.818 plus 9.455 divided by 2 equals, and it's negative, a negative 5.64 amps. I give one more decimal place, but that's good enough. I3 is equal to, and the last one, V2 divided by 4. V2 is equal to 9.455 volts divided by 4. 9.455 divided by 4 equals, we get 2.364 amps. So there you have all three of the currents. Now let's see if that makes sense. At this junction right here, we have 8 amps coming in. And we have I2, which is a minus 5.64 amps. That means I actually flows in the opposite direction, and I3 flows in this. So the positive of this value plus this should add up to 8, and it looks like it does, which means that's correct. Now let's take a look at this junction right here. We have 6 amps leaving. We have I2 coming in and I1 coming in. So the positive of this plus this, or I should say the positive of this value plus this should add up to 6 amps. It does. So it looks like we have all the right currents and we have all the right voltages. And that's how we find the voltages and the currents on a circuit like this with current sources using the nodal analysis method. And that's how it's done.